Well, we're down to our last lab. Oh my gosh, we're going to learn the anatomy of the reproductive system. So with the reproductive system, let me uh, point out that on page 153 of your lab manual, um, those are going to be the parts of the anatomy of the male reproductive system. And on page 154, it's the parts on the female reproductive system, okay? So <clears throat> one of the things that you will notice or <clears throat> most students notice um, when they're learning male reproductive anatomy is that it is surprisingly complicated. And one of the reasons it's surprisingly complicated is because these um, organs, the testes, um, they start off their developmental life up by the kidneys and then they are pulled down through the abdomen um, as the baby gets close to being born and they end up in these, this pouch called uh, the scrotum. So uh, it kind of twists up the anatomy of the male reproductive system. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start and follow basically the, the path that a sperm would take from where it is made all the way up until um, it is ejaculated. So the organs that create um, sperm and also testosterone in men are called testes. Um, generally, men have got two testes. We'll talk a little bit about the tiny structures inside of the testes, um, probably in our lecture. Uh, from the testes, uh, the sperm are going to be moved into this structure, which is called the epididymis, epididymis, E-P-I-D-I-D-Y-M-I-S, epididymis. Um, epididymis is, is a funny word to spell. Uh, I know I've always had trouble with it. Um, so a couple of things, there's no U in epididymis. So it's all I's and, a, and one Y. And then the other thing is, well, where do I put the Y? Um, and the, the place I remember to put the Y is I think of that um, artist uh, P. Diddy, and that's how I know where to put the Y. You put the Y at the end of P. Diddy. Um, uh, unlike P. Diddy, uh, there, there are not double Ds in the word. So hopefully that'll help you spell it better. Epididymis. The epididymis is an area, it's actually lots of a long coiled tube um, all bunched together, but this is the place where sperm are going to finish their maturation period. When there's an ejaculation, the matured sperm will be sent up this tube, which is called the ductus deferens. The ductus deferens is also called the vas deferens. And uh, from the vas deferens, it's going to go around to the back of the urinary bladder. So the urinary bladder is back here. Um, and we're looking at the urinary bladder from behind the man, all right? So we're looking from back to front, and it's on the back of the urinary bladder here that we can see, um, this, is, this has got a name, you don't need to know that, but you're going to see that there are a couple of glands on the back of the urinary bladder, and those glands are called seminal vesicles. The seminal vesicles, the seminal vesicles uh, produce important secretions that are that are going to be added to the sperm that are coming out of the testis and are going to be the most uh, the largest volume of ultimately what's going to be semen now where the seminal vesicles tube joins up <clears throat> with the vas deferens the resulting tube is called the ejaculatory duct the ejaculatory duct looks different in different diagrams it looks different on your model so make sure you can identify the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct is going to take sperm from the vas deferens and secretions from the seminal vesicle and take them through the prostate gland um, to a, a part of the urethra in males that's called the prostatic urethra. This structure here is the prostate gland in your textbook, it's depicted as yellow. In our lab model, it's kind of a dark purpley red. Um, and the part of the urethra that goes through the prostate gland is called the prostatic urethra. After the prostatic urethra, uh, then there's going to be the part of the urethra that goes through the penis, and that's called the penile urethra. 
right? And from there to the outside world. Oh, a vasectomy. Let me show you what a vasectomy is. Okay, here we have got the entire male reproductive system. So let's do a little bit more detail. We have got the uh, testes that sit in this pouch of skin and the pouch of skin is called the scrotum, scrotum, S-C-R-O-T-U-N. Scrotum is number one in your lab manual. The testes internally, their structure um, has got a part of the testes that are making sperm. Those are the seminiferous tubules. And then in between the seminiferous tubules are cells that make testosterone, and those are called the interstitial cells. When the sperm is basically done being built, but just needs to mature, it'll go here to the epididymis during an ejaculation. It'll go up the vas deferens, which is called the ductus deferens. That tube, the vas deferens, goes around to the posterior aspect of this structure here, which is the urinary bladder where it will bump into secretions from the seminal vesicle, and together they will go into this tube that is called the ejaculatory duct, ejaculatory duct, and the seminal fluid plus the sperm will arrive here in the prostatic urethra. Again, the prostate gland is depicted as yellow in this particular picture, but it's a dark purpley red um, on your lab model. The prostate gland adds its secretions here at the seminal, uh, at the prostatic urethra. And now we actually have something that we would refer to as semen. That semen will be pushed out through the penile urethra um, and out into, you know, theoretically into the vagina. I wanted to tell you a little bit about a vasectomy. With a vasectomy, uh, there will be a little piece of the sum of the vas deferens or the ductus deferens that gets cut um, and uh, ligated. So um, right here um, where the scrotum meets uh, the this part of a man's body, uh, there is an area where the vas deferens is actually relatively close to the skin on the posterior aspect of the scrotum there. So in a doctor's office, uh, the doctor will give a little bit of local anesthetic um, and then make a single incision. Through that single incision, the doctor can uh, reach both of the vas deferens, um, exteriorizes them just long enough to uh, wrap a, a ligation or a suture around it, cuts the ends, and then that's it. There are no sutures in a vasectomy. A vasectomy does not change the volume of an ejaculate because all the volume of the semen is really coming here from the prostate gland and the seminal vesicle. Uh, men who have had vasectomies do not notice any difference in the quality of their orgasm. Um, it's not a noticeable change in the volume of the ejaculate. And um, also testosterone levels are not monkeyed around with by, um, by a, a vasectomy. Vasectomies take mm, probably about 10 minutes to actually take, and then they're done in a doctor's office and that's it. All right, let's look one more time. <clears throat> now we're looking at the exterior parts of a man's, re man's reproductive system. Remember this pouch of skin is called the scrotum. The testes sit in the scrotum and the reason that they're there is to keep the temperature of the testes cooler than normal human body temperature. The testes, uh, in order to build sperm that are healthy and vigorous, um, those sperm should be grown, developed um, at a temperature that is cooler than the core temperature of the human body. And that's why the testes sit in the scrotum hanging away from the human body. <clears throat> this structure is the epididymis. The epididymis is where the sperm will finish maturing. During an ejaculation, they will go up here through the ductus deferens or the vas deferens. They go into the body. You cannot see it from here, <clears throat> but around to the back side of the urinary bladder. Um, there the sperm will be um, mixed with secretions from the seminal vesicle, secretions from the prostate gland, 
and now we've got an ejaculate, now we've got semen that will come out through the penile urethra. A couple more details about the penis. Here we can see that in this image, uh, this penis has not been circumcised. Circumcision, let me go backwards a little bit. <clears throat> Circumcision, Circumcision is the removal of a flap of skin uh, called the prepuce. Here it is, prepuce, P-R-E-P-U-C-E. -E. And prepuce is under 11, which is the penis. We have got uh, five subcategories that you need to know. Uh, for the first one, the glands, that's not a typo. It is actually spelled G-L-A-N-S. The glands is the end of the penis. It's the, the more uh, sensory portion of the penis, the glands. And the glands in men um, would be covered by this flap of skin called the prepuce. In the procedure known as circumcision, the prepuce is cut away uh, from the edge of the glands. So let's look back here. So if you look here, you'll see that the glands is in here, and here it's surrounded by a fold of skin called the prepuce. And our models in lab were circumcised at the factory. So those models do not have a prepuce on them anymore. Uh, so if in, in uh, lab, you see the um, model, I have a picture of the model. Hmm. Ah, here, like this particular model. This is the glands of the penis. The prepuce has been circumcised away, okay? So glands. Let's talk a little bit more about the structure of the, uh, the structure of the penis. The structure of the penis is made out of two different erectile tissues. One that's smaller wraps right around uh, the penile urethra and it is called the corpus spongiosum. The corpus spongiosum is erectile, but doesn't create a turgid enough penis for an actual erection. The, um, the uh, part of the penis that is actually turgid enough to create an erection is called the corpus cavernosum. And the corpus cavernosum, um, there are actually two of them, and so sometimes you'll see singular corpus cavernosum as on this uh, image from your textbook. Sometimes you'll see uh, corpora cavernosa, and that's actually the plural. And technically there are two. So let's look here at the anatomy of the penis. Um, this area here, that is the part that would be lying against a man's leg if the penis is flaccid. And you can see this is the corpus spongiosum. And inside the corpus spongiosum would be the penile urethra. Here we can see one of the corpus cavernosums. There are actually two of them. If you were to cut across the penis, there are two corpora cavernosa. Here we can see the glands of the penis and the prepuce very, very well. Uh, so now you've got uh, the anatomy of the penis. The prepuce, uh, its common name is the foreskin, and it's the foreskin that is removed when baby boys are circumcised, sometimes as a hospital procedure, and in some religions as a religious procedure. Let's see what else you need to know about the testes. The testes, I said a little bit more detail about them. If you look at them microscopically small, you'll see that the testes are made out of like little tiny tubes. And those little tiny tubes are kind of wadded up and put together into the structure that is the testis. And those tubes are made out of seminiferous tubules. In between the tubes, there are cells that make testosterone and those cells are called the interstitial cells. Oh, the bulbourethral gland. The bubble urethral gland is number nine in your lab manual, and the bubble urethral gland is so small in men that actually in our main reproductive model, it's not even the depicted. In this reproductive model, it's right here. So here we've got the urinary bladder, and that is going to be the prostatic urethra, the penile urethra. Here we've got the glands of the penis, 
wrapped around the penile urethra. This is corpus spongiosum. And here we've got the corpus cavernosum, which is farther away from a man's leg in a flaccid penis. All right, I think that's it for our male reproductive anatomy. We'll do the female reproductive anatomy in our next video.